I teach art here at Lakeside Elementary School in Coppell, Texas, and right here with you. In this video, I will show you how to make your very own flamingo painting. For this project, you will either need a piece of paper like I have here or a canvas like the one my son made this summer. I will be using a piece of paper. It's called mixed media paper. It's thick enough to hold up some heavy paint and I also have a piece of sketch paper underneath just to keep it a little more neat. The other supplies that you will need are paints. I'm using acrylic paints today and brushes, pencils for drawing, erasing, water for washing, and some sort of palette. The first thing I'm going to do to get started today is draw two lines. One line will be the horizon line where the sky meets the ocean. My next line, I'll make a curvy line where the water lands on the beach. Okay, so to begin, I will use my larger brush. I'm gonna grab a little blue and load my brush with a little white as well and just start painting the sky back and forth. The white and blue will mix together as you're painting for a beautiful effect that looks a lot like the real sky. For the very tip top of my paper, I'm just gonna use only blue. Make it a little darker at the top and lighter at the bottom as it goes towards the horizon line. Right off a bit and move on to the water. I'm going to be using a little bit of this turquoise teal, aqua green you could call it. And I'll start at the top of the water with the darkest without adding any white. When you add white to a color we call that tinting. So we wouldn't want to tint it just yet because the deeper the water is, the darker it looks. And as you get closer to the shore, you can start adding more white. It happens this way in nature because the sunlight can shine all the way through the water when it's shallow, but not when it's deep. So the shallow water looks more see-through and the deep water looks really dark. Don't forget to cover up your pencil lines. And if you feel like you need to go back and add white or aqua in any spot, feel free. If you blend the colors too much though, you're just gonna end up making one solid color. So at some point you need to stop when you can still see more than one shade of aqua. I think that looks pretty good. So for right. the sand, I'll be using the same brush cleaned off and ready to go, um, Naples Yellow from the basic Liquitex color, if you wanna know exactly. But just pick any color that you think looks a little like sand. I prefer sand that looks white like sugar, so I'm going to be adding some white to mine. But you get to decide. Perhaps you like yours just the way it is. Okay, my background is dry. All right, so to touch up that little sea foam on the shore here, we'll just add a little white. Perhaps we move our brush around a little. Make it look crashy. Ha, that's a new word. Excellent. Maybe a little more aqua to cover up that sand. Oopsie. I'm gonna be right. drawing the flamingo with a pink colored pencil. Oftentimes if I'm working on top of acrylic paint or working on a canvas, if I draw with regular lead, it tends to smear when you paint over it. But if you use a color pencil, it doesn't seem to do that. So you could freehand your, an oval right in the middle of the water. Or you can do what I sometimes do with my younger artists is I will cut out a tracer for them. So you could have someone help you do this. Or you could freehand an oval on your own. Or find something to trace, perhaps. So we'll need one oval for the body. And then we'll need the circle for the head. And we're going to attach this head to the body with our paintbrush. So we don't want to put this too close to the body. We want to have a little bit of room to make a long skinny neck. So I'm going to move it up a little higher in the sky, but I also want to save room over here for its beak. And I'm saving room over here for palm trees. I am going to use a little bit of a bigger brush. I have three sizes here, small, medium, large. I'm going to use a little bit of a larger one because its body is pretty large. I'm going to start with a paler pink. 
I'm going to outline around its body in a circular form. When you paint something that's round, you should use round lines. And so we're just going to put a little base layer of this pale pink. All right, if you use thicker globs of paint, it will look more feathery like a flamingo and it will also cover up that ocean water a little better. Okay, we'll do the same to its head. And after that, I'm going to connect the head to the body with almost an S line. It's going to start at the very tip top of its head and go down and come out to the very front of the body. All right, but that's a little thin, so we'll make it a little thicker. That is a good start for our flamingo. Okay, pause the video anytime you need. All right, I'm now gonna keep that pink on my brush and I'm gonna add a little bit of hot pink and we're also gonna create a tail. Let's do that first and then we'll add the hot pink. So this tail feather is like a triangle sticking out the back side. Try to make it pointy on the end like that. And then we'll grab some of this hot pink and we'll just add a few little feathers that look a little more bright than the others. I bet a lot of you know why flamingos are pink or where they get their pink from. When I first learned that they get their pink from eating pink things like shrimp, I was very excited about that. I just thought that was so interesting. And it made me wonder what, what would happen if humans turned colors when they ate certain things. Ah, that'd be frightening, right? So if you keep going over this too much, your two pinks are gonna become one pink. You wanna be able to see both of those. So don't go over it too much. You might even wanna add a little touch of white here and there because they do start out a little white, so all their feathers are a little bit different. So you can have a little white, a little light pink, a little hot pink, and you're good to go. For my flamingo's beak, I'm gonna start with a, a white. You could maybe even use a pink gray or something like that, but here we go. I'm gonna start right about here at the top of its head, and I'm going to come out. That line is not showing up super well, but I can see where it's kind of scratched the paint and made it an indentation. So I'm gonna, maybe I'll switch over to a pink and see if that can help, at least help you see it better on the screen. There we go. And then we'll start about here and we're gonna make this come to a point. Okay, I'm gonna be using my tiniest paintbrush to paint the beak white. Try to stay in the lines. Take your time. Try not to start with too much paint on your brush. I think I might have gotten a big of a little bit too big of a, a blob. It's always better to start with a little and add more if you need. I think that looks pretty nice. I'm gonna wash my brush and do the black. After you wash your brush, make sure you dry it. You don't wanna have watery paints. These paints have just the right amount of water in them. You might notice I got the smallest, teeny tiny little bit of black that I could on my brush. This black can be a color that we can really mess up a painting if you use a little too much of it. Okay, that looks great. Let's do the eye next. For the eye, I'm gonna use the back side of my paintbrush. It makes great circles. I'm gonna dip this in the white and touch right here to make the white of the flamingo's eye. And when that's all dry, I will come back and add a black dot like you see here. Let's work on our flamingo's legs next. We're gonna be drawing one leg straight down vertical line and another one is going to be a diagonal and a horizontal that kind of creates the number four. It's a little backwards, but I bet you can see it. So I'm drawing two lines down for the verticals and then I can give a triangle at the bottom for its foot. See, I'm gonna try this pink one, how about that? And a little zigzag line connecting, all right. Next, we'll start at that same place, but we're gonna go out with a diagonal Give it two of them, and then we'll go back across with two horizontals, and it looks like he's standing on one leg. And then, of course, we'll add the triangle at the bottom for the foot, and then we'll add paint to that. I'm gonna start with a very small amount of orange on my smallest brush, and I'm gonna fill in those lines. And 
after filling in those lines, I'll probably just leave a little bit of orange on my brush and grab a touch of that white and maybe even a little bit of pink and come back and add a line to the, each side of its leg just to give it kind of a highlight to make it look more dimensional. It's kind of a fun artist thing to do. But like I said earlier, if you keep blending those three colors together, you're just going to end up with one color. So try not to over mix. That's looking good. You can see on this one I got a little bit more of highlights going. So you can take your time and go for that. You might need to wait a little bit for that orange to dry to get your highlights to show up a little better. Let's take a look back. We're going to start here and barely go out. We're going to make two palm trees. So we're not even going to draw them. We're just going to make two lines like so. And then we'll thicken them. Do it a couple more times. Here we go. They should look a little thicker on the bottom maybe. A little thinner at the top. Most trees get smaller at the top, bigger at the bottom. That looks nice. Now maybe I'll use my small detail brush with a little bit of this darker brown to make some detail lines on the tree trunks. Oftentimes palm trees have little letter V's on them. So you can make lines going in diagonals in one direction and then come back and make your diagonals in the next direction. And don't worry about being perfect. Just do your best and have fun. All right, that's looking pretty good. When I draw palm trees, I typically put three little coconuts at the top. Okay, it's time for the palm fronds. I'm going to start with um, three shades of green. Perhaps I'll start with the darkest first. I'm using my smallest brush and I'm going to begin by pulling one line long and thin off of each of these. Palm trees kind of lay down with a curve and we want them to be pretty long. So then I also like to add a few more to each branch. So maybe one going this way and this way. Maybe one going back the other way. It's looking nice. All right, then this is kind of like the branch for each palm frond. Next, we will put what's like the leaves of each branch. But we're basically doing a similar version of what we put on the trunks. You're adding almost a letter V onto each of those branches that we made. And if you'll do that with all three of the greens that I have here, or any of the greens that you have, at least two different ones I think will look really nice. And if you don't have two different greens, you can always add white to one, or add a touch of black to darken one up. Okay, this takes a little bit of time, but all great artists know that great art takes lots of effort. So take your time. If you need to take a break, come back later. That's okay too. Okay, so it looks as though I've gotten a lot of dark green going. I'll just keep going until I get the lighter green and the lightest green mixed in as well. And I think I'll even add a little bit of um, lightish brown to my coconuts to give them a little bit of a highlight. On to my last value, the lightest of all. That is just looking great. We have a couple of things we need to do to finish this project. Remember I said we would use a little bit of a smaller brush to get a black dot on our eye. So I'm going to use the back end of this paint brush and touch the black just a tiny bit and touch the eye just a tiny bit. And now we have a bit of a pupil. And the last thing every artist should do, sign it. All right, until next time.